Good day everyone, I'm Norman Walberger and we're investigating a new approach to arithmetic based on multisets, data structures which are unordered and allow repetition. So today we're going to take the big step from polynumbers to multinumbers. Let me quickly review what we did in our previous video. We introduced zero as the multiset, or more shortly M set, which is empty, which has nothing in it. We introduced the type of natural number. A natural number is an M set of zeros. So there's a natural number. That's actually probably the simplest natural number, which is not zero itself, and it's called one. This natural number has two zeros in it. It's got the usual name of two. This is three, etc. So this is the usual natural number story. Then a poly number is an M set of natural numbers. And the simplest one is this one alpha, which is just the M set containing one. Here is a more general poly number, 0, 0, 0, 1, 3, 4, 4. So these are all natural numbers. This is an M set of natural numbers, so therefore it's a poly number. And then we also introduced multi numbers. A multi number is an M set of poly numbers. So uh, the simplest one there would be the M set consisting just of alpha. And we haven't yet given it a name. And that's going to be interesting for us today to investigate you know, how we should get some terminology going for these multi numbers. Here's a more, more general kind of multi number. So it's an M set consisting of there's a poly number, there's another poly number, there's another poly number, there's another poly number. So it's a, an M set of poly numbers. Repetitions are allowed and it's unordered. There's no commas. And so this is a multi number. So today we want to really uh, talk about the, the big step going from here to here. It might be useful to introduce this designation of a pure M set to denote one of these structures that is obtained by starting with empty M sets and just putting them in other M sets. So just nesting empty M sets inside other M sets, etc. So this is uh, contained in this sort of ongoing uh, sequence here. We started with zero, which is a type, and then we had nat, which includes zero, and then poly and multi, and clearly we could uh, keep on going in a kind of a step-by-step -step, uh, fashion. So I want to introduce this idea because it's uh, certainly possible that later on we might be interested in M sets of other things, other kinds of objects, not just empty M sets and things formed from them. All right. So um, the advantage in making this specific is that uh, this way the operations that we're going to talk about um, later are all sort of consistently defined on, on these things because an M set in this context, a pure M set, is already an M set of M sets and it's already an M set of M set of M sets, etc. So I also might want to point out that we should not think about these things as objects. So it's not as if we have an object of all multi-sets, okay? We want to avoid that sort of modern set theory approach where we think that we've got all the multi-sets contained in here. No, no. What we're doing is we're rather identifying a type. Okay, so you should think about it as being something like a instructions for a computer so that a computer gets some input and the computer is able to read that input and then decide whether the object is of this type or some other type. Okay, that's what we're talking about. These are not objects. And I want to just emphasize that there's this basic principle that runs through a lot of my exposition, which is that we want write downable mathematics. We want to separate or distance ourselves from the 20th century abstractions which have allowed people to think about things which they are not actually able to write down. So we don't want to be doing that. Okay? So we want to insist that all the pure M sets that we're talking about are completely unambiguously write downable. You can actually exhibit them in their entirety, not with any uh, you know, uh, requirements of, of alternate universes or who knows what uh, you know, beyond our vision. So in particular, have a look at these. So these are examples of things which, from our point of view, at least at this stage, are not allowable, right? We are not allowed to say, oh, consider this pure M set. What is this? Oh, this is what you get when you start with an empty M set, like a box, and then you put that inside a bigger box, and you put that inside a bigger box, and you put that inside a bigger box, and you keep going without stopping. Keep going, everything is contained in a bigger box, to infinity, whatever that means. 
Okay? That's the kind of thing that 20th century mathematicians were not reluctant to, to talk about. It's a, if you actually look at the foundations of analysis or differential geometry or algebraic geometry or, or topology, it's essentially this kind of talking which is at the core of much of these subjects. Okay? We do not want to go there. Okay? So for us, this kind of object where you have to do an infinite number of things is not going to be allowed. Similarly, going the other way, we can start with a box and inside it put a, another box and inside that you put another box, inside that you put another box and then you keep going again to infinity. Okay? We're not allowed to use that language okay? because we can't write the thing down completely. This is obviously not an adequate representation just like this isn't. So. These are not the kinds of things that we want to do, but I want to keep open the possibility that there's an idea contained here, right? There is some kind of idea, and it's possible for us to perhaps access that idea in a complete, uh, completely right downable, finite, concrete fashion. But we would have to do that in, in a different way from doing something like this with three dots. Okay, so I'm not saying that this object will never, these objects will never be part of our world. I'm just saying that when we do eventually want to try to think about something like this, we're going to have to think about them in, in different ways that allow us still to write them down completely finitely and write downably. Okay. And it's also uh, useful to, to, to point out that later on, uh, we may want to depart from our pure M-set point of view and consider other kinds of data structures, like in the LOM system, lists, ordered sets, multisets, sets. Right now we're just focusing on multisets, but it will become useful potentially for us to consider other such structures. Okay, so in that case we might depart from this, this very pure M-set uh, point of view. So our two basic operations are addition and multiplication, and let's review them here. I hope you've watched Math Foundations 227, the previous video where we introduce this approach, uh, and it's fresh in your mind. So addition is the simplest possible thing. We just take M sets and we dump the contents out into another box. That's addition of M sets. Very simple. So for example, here's an M set, here's an M set, here's an M set. This M set here has uh, some poly numbers in them. These are poly numbers, and uh, this one here has uh, some poly numbers and also a number. Uh, but they're all uh, M sets of poly numbers, so the, these are all um, multi numbers, and we just get the sum by dumping them out. So the 3, the 3, the 1, 2, the 0, the 0, the 1, the 3, the 4. Multiplication is one step up, a little bit more sophisticated, in that it relies on the prior definition of addition, but we're going to be adding elements of the various things to be multiplied in all possible ways. So to multiply these three M sets, we take one element from this one, one element from this one, one element from this one, and we add them. And because addition uh, doesn't depend on the order in which we do things, so also multiplication is not going to depend on the order. So we don't need to worry about bracketing, in other words. It's a, a big simplification. Okay, so what do we actually get here? So we've got um, this M set has M set 2 and 3. It has M set 4, M set 4 in it. This one has M set 1, 6 and a 0. So we're multiplying them. So we have to take elements from each one. So let's take this M set 2, this M set 4, this M set 1, 6, and we're going to add them. This one, M set 2, M set 4, and the 0, and we'll add them. This M set 2, and then this M set 4, and this M set 1, 6, add them. This 2, this 4, and this 0, and add them. And then the same kind of thing, but now we take this number 3, the number 3 plus the M set 4 plus the M set 1, 6, and add them. The M set 3, uh, this M set 4, the 0, and add them. This M set 3, this M set 4, this M set 1, 6, and add them. This M set 3, this M this 3, uh, this m set 4, and this 0, and we add them. Okay, and when we actually do that, okay, the sum of these things, just dump them out, uh, we get a 2, a 4, a 1, and a 6. Here we get a 2, a 4. When we add 0, 0, remember, is the empty m set. You add that, it doesn't do anything, so you just get 2, 4. This one here, you get 2, 4, 1, 6, the same thing as over here. Here, 2, 4, again, same thing as here. Here, the natural number 3 as an M set, it's 0, 0, 0. It consists of three zeros. Okay? So uh, when we look at it that way, then adding them comes up uh, with 0, 0, 0, 4, 1, 6. 
Here the sum is 0, 0, 0, 4. And this adding 0 doesn't do anything. You're just adding an empty M set. And here we get the same thing as here, and here we get the same thing as here. So this is how we um, calculate the product of M sets. One of the interesting aspects of this approach to arithmetic is that it seems that no matter how far you go, it's just part of some bigger picture. Okay, so that means that we never have this feeling of a complete understanding. We feel that our understanding is always just temporary and waiting for the next level, the next, uh, next, the bigger picture of which this is just some part of that. So we have to be a little bit modest, but it also means that we need to be flexible about the terminology and our notation and our thinking because it might be possible that with a few steps up we start to see what we've just previously been doing in a new light and we have to maybe uh, improve our notation to make it fit with this bigger picture. So that's going to happen right here as we try to move from poly to, to multi. So we've introduced this notation alpha which corresponds with my usual terminology for poly numbers is alpha sort of your basic variable. So alpha was just a name for the multiset consisting of a single one. I want to change the name of that now. Okay? And this is, you know, seemingly unmotivated until we go to the multi um, point of view. And then you see, ah, there's actually a very good reason for doing this. Okay, so we're going to change the name from alpha to alpha zero or alpha sub zero. Okay, so we're going to make that change. So now the name of this M set, the M set consisting just of one, is now going to be alpha zero. Alpha sub zero. Okay, so let me remind you, there's just some basic facts about this thing. So if we take two alpha zero, in other words, alpha zero plus alpha zero, that's M set one plus M set one, dump them together, you get M set one one. Similarly, three alpha zero will be M set one one one. If we multiply this thing by itself, alpha zero squared, we have m set 1 times m set 1. We perform that by adding the ingredients, 1 plus 1 in there, so we get m set 2. And similarly, alpha 0 cubed is m set 3, and so on. So now when we have a, a general poly number like this thing here, m set 00001344, we can write that as a more usual polynomial in alpha 0 here, okay? by first of all sort of decomposing this into its various types. So um, 0, 0, 0 is 1 M set, M set 1, M set 3, M set 4, 4. And then we recognize this thing here is just the number 3. This is what we're calling alpha 0. This thing here, this just single 3, that was alpha 0 cubed. A single 4 would be alpha 0 to the 4th, and there's two of them here. So in the same way here, we get 2 alpha 0 to the 4th. Okay, so this works better now because when we go to multi what we want to do is introduce a new object which is the the previous object namely alpha zero put into an m set okay so we're going to take the m set now consisting of alpha zero and we're going to give that a new name that's going to be alpha sub one okay so alpha sub one is alpha sub zero in an m set and I have to emphasize the important distinction throughout this story of having an object and then having that object in an M set. Okay, those are two different things. And sometimes they're quite different things. Okay? So you have to keep that separation in mind. Alpha 0 is this thing. Alpha 1 is the alpha 0 in the M set. And actually, you know, if we wrote it out just in terms of brackets, it would look like this. So alpha 1 is the M set consisting of alpha zero. There's alpha zero, m set one. And what is one? Well, one is actually m set zero. Okay. And what is zero actually? Well, zero is the empty m set. So we could sort of parse this by seeing that this alpha one is really, you know, a pair of brackets containing a pair of brackets containing a pair of brackets containing a pair of brackets. Ultimately, it's just brackets. That's alpha sub one. That's now our, our basic multi number, which is not itself a poly number. It's the starting point from going from the poly world to the multi world. Okay, so let's do some basic arithmetic now with multi numbers using this new notation. 
and um, so we'll sort of see how it works and it also suggests that there's something else that we need to introduce. Okay, so alpha sub 1, that's m set alpha 0. Okay, so 2 alpha sub 1, or I'll just say 2 alpha 1, is um, what you get when you take two of these guys and dump them together, so it's m set alpha 0 alpha 0, which in terms of numbers is m set m set 1 m set 1. There's an alpha 0, there's another alpha 0. 3 alpha 1 will be m set consisting of m set 1, m set 1, m set 1. That's an alpha 0, that's an alpha 0, that's an alpha 0. How about alpha 1 squared? Okay, so we're squaring, multiplying this thing by itself. Well, the way you multiply m sets is you form another m set whose entries are the um, possible sums of entries here and here. Well, there's only one entry here and one entry here, or one element here, one element here. So there's only one possible sum that we're going to form. Alpha 0 plus alpha 0. Alpha 0 is m set 1. So we have m set 1 plus m set 1. And that is m set 1 1, right? We're just dumping these two 1's out into a separate box. So we get another box with the two 1's in it. Okay, so that's what alpha sub 1 squared looks like. Similarly, alpha sub 1 cubed looks like this. It's an m set consisting of m set 1, 1, 1. So here is um, a poly number in alpha 1. Okay, say 3 plus alpha 1 plus 4 alpha 1 squared plus alpha 1 to the fifth. We wanted to write that out. Uh, the 3 is m set 0, 0, 0. The alpha 1, well, that's the same thing we've been talking about. M set, M set 1. It's an M set containing just alpha 0. And alpha 1 squared, that was this thing here. And we have four of them, so we have four of them. And alpha 1 to the fifth, in parallel to this, it's going to be M set, M set 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, we could write this out more... Uh, so elementarily by making a big M set, okay, and then it's going to have a 0, 0, 0, it's going to have this M set 1, and then it's going to have M set 1, 1, M set 1, 1, M set 1, 1, M set 1, 1, because there are four of them, and it will also have M set 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, and here we've written it out then sort of uh, in a pretty reduced form. We could still make it more reduced by replacing the ones with m set zeros, and then we could make it even more reduced by replacing the zeros with m sets. So then there would just be uh, brackets and nothing else, okay? But this is a kind of a nice way of reducing it to, to natural numbers. I think that works well for us human beings. So I want to compare this now with the corresponding poly story. We're taking the same form, but replacing alpha 1 with alpha 0. 3 plus alpha 0 plus 4 alpha 0 squared plus alpha 0 to the 5. So this is in the world of poly. Right, this is in the world of multi, this is in the world of poly. So the 3 is still 0, 0, 0. The alpha 0 now is just m set 1. The alpha 0 squared is m set 2. We have four of them. And the alpha sub 0 to the fifth is m set 5. So if we... Um, oh, I put a bracket over here. There's no, no bracket. Sorry. No bracket. Okay, it's just this plus this plus this plus this. Now if we want to put all those together because it's a sum of stuff, then there's a, a bracket. And then we have th three of these zeros. We have a one, we have a two, 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 and a five. So you see, it's <laughs> in the world of polys, uh, the natural numbers are occurring um, sort of in correspondence with powers of the alpha zero. Over here in the multi-world, when we're looking at alpha one and polynomials in alpha one, we're always staying within a, a framework that just involves the, the number one. Okay? We're not getting twos and, and threes and so on. This is just in terms of number, number ones. So that's telling us that there's some more here that we need to actually include. We have not got all of multi uh, yet. Okay, this is just sort of the first step of multi.
Okay, so let's get at these further multi numbers. So we already have alpha 1. Okay, there's alpha 1, 2 alpha 1, we know 3 alpha 1. Now let's look at alpha 2. We're going to introduce alpha sub 2 to be the m set consisting of alpha 0 squared. Okay, alpha 1 was the m set of alpha 0. Alpha 2 is alpha 0 squared, the m set containing that. Alpha 3 will be corresponding to the m set consisting of alpha 0 cubed. Now alpha 0 squared is the m set 2 and alpha 0 cubed is the m set 3. So alpha 2 looks like this and alpha 3 looks like this. If we look at 2 alpha 2, well we have to add two of these things, we get m set with two copies of m set 2, m set 2. Here's 3 alpha 2. Two copies of alpha 3 will be uh, m set, m set 3, m set 3 and so on. Okay, so we're enlarging our world here. So let's do some arithmetic with these things just to get used to things, all right? So just some basic linear arithmetic. So say alpha 1 plus 3 alpha 2 plus alpha 3. So that m set plus 3 of those plus 1 of those. Well, we dump everything in boxes. We get an m set with a single m set 1 M set 2, M set 2, M set 2, because we have three of them, and an M set 3. How about alpha 1 squared? Well, we've already done that. Okay, let me remind you that when we multiply alpha 1 by alpha 1, we're getting M set, M set 1, 1. And similarly, alpha 1 cubed was M set, M set 1, 1, 1. What about alpha 2 squared? So now we're going to take this M set and multiply it by itself. How do we do that? We have to take the m set consisting of the sum of these two things. Okay, so m set 2, m set 2, dump them together, we get m set 2, 2. Similarly, alpha sub 2 cubed will be the m set consisting of m set 2, 2, 2. How about, say, alpha 1 times alpha 2? There's alpha 1, there's alpha 2. To multiply them, they each have only one element, so we just have to take those single elements and add them. So we add m set 1 and m set 2 to get m set 1, 2. So there's the product of this sort of like a variable alpha 1 with this sort of a variable alpha 2. But they're not really variables, they're just specific multinumbers. Okay, so let's do a little bit more arithmetic to try to get used to this somewhat unfamiliar framework, even though it's corresponding to an algebra which is very familiar to us. It's really just polynomial algebra, but now in quite a lot of different variables. So let's look at this expression here. So we have alpha 0 times alpha 1 squared, and I'm not going to write the times um, always, um, plus alpha 2 cubed alpha 4 plus 2 alpha 5 cubed. All right, so let's write this thing out. So what is alpha 0? It is the m set 1. What is alpha 1 squared? Well, it is the m set consisting of m set 1, 1 plus alpha 2 cubed. What was alpha 2 cubed? It was m set 2, 2, 2. Alpha 4 that's going to be m set m set 4 plus 2 alpha sub 5 cubed. Okay, so there'll be two of them. Maybe I'll just put 2. 2 uh, alpha sub 5. What's alpha sub 5? That is this thing, and we're going to cube it. So we need to put three of them together. So we're going to get 5, 5, like that. Okay, so let's write this out in a, in a kind of an M set fashion. So if we multiply here, these are, these are multiplications, okay, multiplication, multiplication. Okay, how do we multiply these two things? We have to uh, take an M set and we add the contents. So. This is like, um, 1 is the m set consisting of 0. This is the m set consisting of 1, 1. So when we add them, we're going to get 0, 1, 1. 
And what about this next one? Uh, here's uh, this M set, 222, 4. So when we multiply these two things, we have to add the inner M sets, 2224. And this thing here, um, 2555. Well, if we wanted to write that out, we would write it out as 555. 555. So if we wrote this as a big M set, maybe I'll do it in a different color. If we wrote it as a big M set, it would be the M set consisting of 0, 1, 1, and then 2, 2, 2, 4, and 5, 5, 5, and Five, five, five. And with some experience, we can just go directly from this to this. Uh, just you know, so he, this this monomial, if you like, alpha zero, alpha one squared corresponds to uh, this this expression, a uh, multiset zero one one zero one one. This thing here, alpha two cubed, alpha four, is represented by this two 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 four. And this 2 alpha sub 5 cubed is um, captured by those two things. Okay, let's go the other way around. Let's have a look at uh, this thing here, which is sort of written in more multi-set notation. Let's see if we can sort of, you know, uh, write this out and uh, see what we get. Okay, so um, let me actually, first of all, maybe I'll rewrite this uh, in in sort of alpha form, okay? So what is this thing here? This thing here is a, a multi-number, okay? Because there's a poly number there, and there's a poly number there. So it's, um, what, what is this thing here? This is going to be alpha one, alpha five. And this thing here is going to be alpha zero, alpha three squared. Okay, and we have to multiply it by this thing here. This is a, a multi-number, and inside here we have a two and a multi-set one, one, one. So the two is um, corresponding to alpha zero squared. And the one, 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 um, that's corresponding to, so plus, alpha one cubed. Okay, so now let's go back to black and let's actually calculate uh, this product using M set multiplication. So this thing has two elements, this thing has two elements, so we have to form all possible sums of these two things. So the first one is one five, we add it to two. Two is the M set zero zero, so we get one five zero zero. When we add this thing and this thing, we're going to get the M set 1, 5, 1, 1, 1. Adding these two, we're going to get 0, 3, 3, 0, 0. And adding these two, we're going to get 0, 3, 3, 1, 1, 1. And now let's convert that into a sort of a polynomial form, if you like, in terms of alphas. Okay, so there's a bunch of uh, terms here, these are like monomials. So this thing here would be like alpha zero squared, alpha one, alpha five, plus here there'll be an alpha one to the fourth, alpha five, here an alpha zero, a cubed, uh, alpha three squared, I guess, and here alpha zero, alpha one cubed, and alpha three squared. Okay, let's just check. Does that actually uh, match up with this thing here? So if we just multiply this out using ordinary polynomial algebra, okay, alpha zero squared times alpha one, alpha five, yes, that's that one there. And alpha one to the fourth, alpha the five, that's that one times that one, yes. And this one times this one, alpha zero cubed, alpha three squared, okay. And this one, alpha zero, alpha one cubed, alpha three squared. Yeah, so it, it works out. So this is just reinforcing uh, the idea that what we really have here is just ordinary algebra. Ordinary algebra, but with lots of different variables. With variables 
alpha 0, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, etc. So it's actually already uh, quite a rich framework. So we're getting a very general algebra in unbounded number of variables, alpha 0, alpha 1, alpha 2. And I want to emphasize that this extends the former discussion that we've had in this series and also in the algebraic calculus course on the extension of arithmetic from poly to bipolys. So what is a bipoly? Well, it's an extension of our one-dimensional approach to polys. Remember, a poly was a vertical list originally. So like 2, 0, 1, 4 would be the poly 2 plus 0 alpha plus 1 alpha squared plus 4 alpha cubed. And when we extend that one-dimensional array to a two-dimensional array, then we can interpret the result as a polynomial in alpha and beta, where beta now corresponds to um, essentially that entry there. So this bipoly here would be the original one, plus also 3 beta plus 5 alpha beta plus uh, 1 alpha squared beta squared. Now, in the new notation that we're introducing, we're replacing alpha with alpha zero, and so it makes sense to think of beta as being replaced with alpha one. Okay, so we would maybe just rewrite this as two plus alpha zero squared plus four alpha zero cubed plus three alpha one plus five alpha zero alpha one plus alpha zero squared alpha one squared. And then this thing here as a multi number could, let's see, uh, if we believe this, uh, so here I'm writing it out sort of in terms of M sets with zeros and ones. So the two is just zero, zero. And the alpha zero cubed, well, there is an alpha zero cubed when we put it in an M set. Okay, this is like three, but you put three in, a, in an M set and you get alpha zero cubed. And here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. So there's four of them. The three alpha one is here, this, this one, in M set 1, it's contained in a bigger M set 1, so that's really an alpha 1, and there's uh, three of them. And then alpha 0, alpha 1, that product is captured by this M set 0, 1, inside the big M set, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. And uh, there's five of them, okay? And then alpha 0 squared, alpha 1 squared is um, 0, 0, uh, 1, 1. So you see that the ordinary story of poly numbers and bipoly numbers in this M set approach, when we write it all out, um, invariably just comes down to numbers zeros and ones. Zeros and ones. And the more general story when we're allowing more variables is to, of course, allow uh, for bigger numbers in here corresponding to variables with bigger indices. So, um, what we've done is we've created, a, I think, a pretty logical and tight um, framework for, for algebra, which is quite novel in some ways, um, but actually there's some surprises ahead of us. So up till now, you could get used to this and say, okay, this is just another way of thinking about the arithmetic that I'm already familiar with. But in my next video, I'm going to show you that this actually takes us far beyond our usual experience, okay? That we're going to be able to look at new aspects of arithmetic that we had never considered before. And that emerges actually also still staying with this um, poly to multi story. When we think about the th third operation, right? So we've had addition and multiplication. Well, then there's a the next operation in the sequence, which you've probably already sort of thought about. Okay, and that, well, of course, we're going to have to call that exponentiation, but it's not an exponentiation that's totally familiar to you. Okay, there's going to be some major surprises when we introduce that into this story, and it'll be almost, uh, you'll be feeling like you're on a, on, a, on a strange vessel in uncharted waters. I'm Noah Wahlberger. Thanks for listening.